Cottenham Primary School in Cambridgeshire is working with its local secondary school to prevent history learning getting lost in transition. The QCA refers to a loss of momentum in history that often happens between Key Stage 2 and 3. To help close this gap, the Cambridgeshire Transition Project brought together a number of primary and secondary history teachers to jointly develop schemes of work for Year 6 pupils. These schemes introduce more complex historical concepts to the pupils and also give the teachers a shared understanding of pupils' abilities with a view to progression across the transition. Andrew Wren, who heads the project, has invited two of the teachers involved to discuss their experiences. David Morell is from Cottenham Primary School and Geraint Brown teaches at Cottenham Village College, a secondary school. Here they show one of their lessons on interpretation which they developed and taught together. Their experience offers you ideas for working with your secondary colleagues to progress history across the transition phase. Dave, could you describe to us how you viewed primary history before your involvement in this project? Well, I, mean, I think we were teaching it very much from here's your topic, this is what you need to put into it, dictated by the QCA and, and schemes of work, uh, and, let's, and let's try and get it all in into the space available, which um, obviously is, is constrained due to the time pressures on, on uh, the core subject, and not really having the subject knowledge or, or, or the skills to be able to do anything other than almost purely deliver them. They're a well-organised school, but the, the focus did tend to be on topics and, you know, what can we find out about what happened in this period and how is it different from how we live today. And there are some very complex concepts that the the national curriculum implies and without the training behind it it's difficult to get beyond that. Well what I want you to do is there's an image on the board and in your envelopes on the tables there's a number of words on cards okay and what I want you to do is to try and match up any words that you think describe this person. What is it about the picture that made you choose warrior? Is well, there anything you can see? Like yeah. soldiers yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay, how can you tell he's a soldier? He's got a big sword. Oh, he's got a sword. Okay. Initially, I think we kind of envisaged this as a way of setting up models of good work to use at Key Stage 2 and then enabling primary staff to stand on their own. But in fact, that's not how we look at it now. It's no, this, this idea of coming in and teaching it here with them has become as, as important part so of the collaboration. Well, yeah, I think the collaboration, the collaboration is as well, much through the transition, yeah, yeah. And through the good of the transition well, we of the children as the work itself. We talked about collaboration in terms of writing the work, um, and therefore you set up schemes which primary schools can go and get access to. But what we've really benefited from is the fact that in future, it's not just a question of saying, OK, well, there's the scheme, it's, it's good, we've used it, it was developed with primary colleagues, go and, and use it. But it's the fact that you go in and, and, and teach, team teach with them. Right, I'd like you to tell me what words you've chosen to describe this person. Well, we chose warrior because um, of the clothes he's wearing and he's got a sword and he looks like he's got blood on his clothes, so he might have been injured. So, warrior. In... Did anybody else choose warrior? Quite a few did. We chose butcher because, butcher. yeah, because okay. he do kill people unneedingly and he don't need to actually kill them. A butcher? What do we normally mean by a butcher? Well, if you say a butcher is up there on the road, you wouldn't think someone would go over and chops people's heads off. A butcher's <laughs> like he, he, he kills pigs to make sausages right. and bacon. My expertise was about looking at schemes of work that I'd developed, particularly from year seven, and saying, well, and just showing some of the ways in which we do things at the secondary school. One was interpretations of history, which is a particularly tricky concept. Um, could you explain, Dave, how your understanding of that has, has grown? Primary teachers um, are unlikely, unless they are specifically taught to teach history, it's unlikely you just innately know about interpretations and, and are able to draw that out of the children. Mm. To be conscious of trying to get the children to be conscious of why a later interpretation of a particular period might have been made. That's allowed my, my teaching to develop within history just purely from that, from that point of view. We chose Colossus. If he's on a coin, he's got to be a Colossus. If he's 
like yes. that because like in our society we have the queen on most of our coins ah. so, so that gave you a clue yeah. as to this person being important one of the things that certainly seemed to emerge from the project is the role of good speaking and listening activities history and in, in, in literacy are so intertwined it's having the time to, to think about how it is that you're actually going to get those strands into what you're teaching. There are children in there that, that struggle um, with coming up with describing words for people, so giving them to them on cards, they were then able to, to pick the right ones, to look at the meanings of the words, thinking about whether it's the right word for the right purpose. So who are they? Anybody got any ideas? Um, I think it's Alexander the Great. Spot on, well done. OK, these are all different images from different times of Alexander the Great. And what was your approach to the use of ICT? That was the area in particular which Dave helped me as well actually because um, Dave had a lot of experience of using um, things like interactive whiteboards and data projectors in the classroom. We were new to this um, in fact and so we kind of developed the ICT strategies within mm. what, we, what we did collaboratively using card sort for example on the chronology of Alexander the Great's life we could do that as, as, as an interactive um, feedback session mm -hmm. when we were on the interactive whiteboard uh, I didn't have the skills to do that originally and didn't mm -hmm. realize that's the way it could be done I've used that a lot since then but I, I learned to do that as a result of the project myself what you've got here is a graph of Alexander's life you've got to try and use what it says to work out whether it means Alexander may have been great. He was taught by Aristotle. So you've got to decide, where shall I put it on the graph? I think he should be up at the top with Why? great. Because if he's being taught, taught by um, Aristotle, yes, who since is... he's like a really famous philosopher, yes. he's probably really great. Right. In 340 BC, Alexander, aged only 16, and won a very important battle. And who'd like to come and help me out with this one? Could you put that one where you think it should go? Excellent. Why did you choose to put it all the way up there? Um, because most people don't, like, be in control of a battle at the age of 16, yeah. and it's, like, very important to his father. They are in a way creating their own interpretations at that stage because they're looking at the evidence in front of them and they're thinking, well, what do I think about this person? And that allows them to just initially get the idea that different people see the same character in different ways. 332 BC, he conquers Egypt and he's actually made the pharaoh of Egypt. Where do you think it should go? Ah, why did you put it there? You have to be really strong to be pharaoh. Yeah, and what's he done? He's actually, what's this word conquer mean? He's achieved something. He's achieved something. He's beaten the Egyptian armies, hasn't he? Excellent. Well done. In terms of the <clears> impact <throat> on, on the children's learning, it's like they've gone up a year. Mm. Year fives and sixes, it, it's possible for them to achieve perhaps more than was originally thought. What are the implications for history departments teaching Key Stage 3? Well, if this were repeated each year and with all the students with, that come into Cottenham, then that will have huge implications in terms of planning what they then do next on interpretations in terms of the issue of progression. You've got to spend time thinking in your departments, what are you looking at getting students to do? Have so you really it's the time for professional reflection, really, Absolutely. to say, well, these are challenging issues and we need to allow time to think about what do the concepts mean yeah. so that we as teachers know what they mean, mm -hmm. and then to differentiate within the activities effectively so that we're allowing the children to access quite high order thinking skills. We're going to do some drama work and we're going to create uh, what we call a tableau. Number one, some of you are going to be Hollywood filmmakers. Some of you will be Arabic chroniclers. And thirdly, from the viewpoint of a, an historian who's writing a textbook for school pupils, JC. How could we make him look a nice easy one? How can we make him look happy? Yeah. <laughs> How can we make him look noble? Okay, notice what Jambo has done with John's head, where he's put his chin. He's tilted it up slightly. It's not down here, it's tilted up slightly. Having your personal professional knowledge of, of teaching a topic or teaching a subject improved al hmm. allows you to then 
bring that to the children to be able to bring them on as, as far as so, possible. So it's not enough just to say have some speaking and listening activities thrown in and to make sure that there's a number of different types of learning styles used. No, I think I Do think you have to, to go further than I that. I think to tenuously link linking interpretations into primary history would make Garrett's job harder because he would have to then go and undo work that was perhaps not done particularly well in the first place due to lack of knowledge from the, from the teachers. It's very difficult to get across in the write-up, like with the QCA schemes of work, what, what is trying to be got at and what, what's going to ha happen in the subtleties of the teaching to extend certain points. So it's got to be that the success of this model was about the collaboration, the working together prior to the delivery. Um, it's not just about having the right activities mm. there, they, they were there for a reason because we were choosing them carefully based on this concept and this pupil. If you think about what, what you're going to dress him in, what are you trying to show him as? Yeah, you've got to remember, go back to the fact that you're a Hollywood filmmaker, you're trying to excite and grab audiences attention. I think he should have like a helmet and sword and whatnot because then, then it he looks shows more important like, and looks like right, that's good. I could yeah. kill you. The historian writing the book, what does he want to do with his book? He wants to find the history of the book. OK. But he also wants the students to make up their yeah. mind. So he doesn't want to just show one side of it. And that's, so that's a good idea, choosing that scene. One would hope that the students are ready for this kind of thinking, and that will have an impact on my first or second or third schemes of work on interpretations within my Key Stage 3 planning could say, well, they're getting into issues which, in terms of level six and seven, it says that's what they're doing. They're looking, they're analysing how and why different interpretations are produced. Well, it's because of the way we scaffolded the work in order to get them to that, able to do that. And I think the implications, therefore, for us are to say, OK, so how do we make the work more challenging if it's not a linear model of progression. What, what do we do in another scheme of work to make this work more challenging? Obviously, it's based on things like the content or the type of interpretation you're looking at, which will add to the challenge later on. Right, here's our first one. What was the role of the people in this, uh, in this picture? The main person with the helmet is, like, about to slaughter a person kneeling. Based on that, which one do you think it was? Hollywood filmmaker, Arabic chronicler, or a school book historian? I think it might be the Hollywood filmmaker. Yeah. Is she right? Hollywood filmmaker. Hollywood filmmaker. Well done, Camilla. Great stuff. What about this one here, please? Chris. The Arabian. The, Ara the Arabian Chroniclers. Yeah. Uh, JC's group, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. For me, it would be great to have two or three of Grant's colleagues to come down and teach all of our year sixes so that they get to see all the faces and they get the experience of, of what a secondary um, uh, history lesson might be like. Uh, and I think that in itself is a very important transition point mm. that, that you've got children here that are nervous about moving to a big school and the more familiar faces, the better. Thank you very much, all of you. You've been really good. Thank you, Mr Brown. Say thank you to Mr Brown, please, people. Thank you, thank you. What's important is that this will continue to happen and so it will affect more students. And we've set up a, a working partnership that um, we've already talked about what we're going to do this year. We've done some more work on it today, but we're also going to do another History Day later on. You can refer back to things when you're doing the next example of the work. So it's been very successful in that sense. If I can get all students that come into my school being able to refer back to one that they've done in their primary, then that'll be great. For more information about transition in history, go to www.teachers.tv.